us pray. Lord, we have a story to tell to the nations. And today, as we take some time to look at that beautiful story, remind us of our need to share it and the joy that other people have when they hear it and the joy that we receive when we share it. Bless us now in Jesus' name. So most of you are aware of the fact that um, I just a little over two weeks ago returned from another trip to Russia. And I think most of you in the congregation who have been here for any time are aware of my involvement in Russia started uh, a little over 26 years ago uh, when I accepted the call to go there and hold a series of evangelistic meetings in April and May, it was this time, 26 years ago, that I was doing evangelism in the city of Saratov. We baptized a couple of hundred people, raised up a church, and God has blessed it. Um, you know, it's kind of like a child. How do you birth a child and walk away from it? Um, it's interesting because the people there in Russia have told me that there have been many other evangelists that have come, uh, but they've never heard from them since. Well, I guess I was a little bit different because I was the pastor that founded that church and uh, help them get it going, and how do you walk away from a child? So uh, you know that my heart is there, and I love those people, and I want to share some stuff with you about, about that uh, continued uh, journey that I've had. Uh, by the way, uh, if any of you are wondering what it looks like at the top of the world, uh, this is probably as close to it as that I have ever been. Uh, I saw this out my window of the plane, and I snapped this picture uh, hoping uh, most of us, uh, our smartphones, have GPS connected. And when I got back, I checked, and sure enough, it logged the exact latitude and longitude where this picture was taken. And I discovered that I wasn't very far from the North Pole. And uh, it was uh, pretty awesome, but I'm sure glad I wasn't, uh, I'm glad I was in the plane and not out there. But, um, you are aware of the fact that um, my main reason for going this time was to go to the uh, city of Moscow and hold uh, an evangelistic campaign for uh, the young adults involved in their campus ministries program at the Moscow International Seventh-day Adventist Church. And uh, I was so blessed. This was the campus ministries team. I shared this with you last uh, two weeks ago. I'm not going to go over and share what I did last week. I'm going to pick up where I left off, but I wanted you to just kind of, this is kind of serving as a as a visual segue uh, to um, where I was last week. And I also showed you this picture. Uh, uh, Yvonne, uh, the gentleman in this picture holding his son Robert, uh, was my translator. And this was his lovely wife, uh, Diana. And if you can look very closely in that picture, what can you tell about it? What, what can you tell about that picture? She's pregnant. Well, guess what? I got a text message from her this morning. and You know, I don't know how it is that I managed to attract all these dochkas, but she calls me, she's calling me Papa now. And she uh, sent me a text message this morning when I got up, and guess what? She's not pregnant anymore, and there she is. There's baby Alice born earlier today, um, probably around 2 o'clock in the morning our time, uh, baby Alice, and... Uh, uh, she sent me, uh, sent me this photo with a message, and so uh, how exciting uh, to be able to, to share in that uh, with her. And I wanted to just uh, share that little piece of joy uh, that um, her family is experiencing right now. Many of you have seen this picture, this photo that I've shared and, and heard the story. The Titian family, uh, the story of Slava and Galia Titian. Uh, Slava, the father in this picture, look, he's very stoic. Uh, in this picture. Um, he was, uh, I've told you the story that he was a, a military officer in the uh, Soviet uh, military. Uh, he was stationed in uh, uh, Berlin, in East Berlin. Uh, he told me that he was trained to shoot dead anybody that would escape to the West. And he said, and I would have done it. Um, after uh, the Cold War ended, um, you know, it was not long after that we came in there. And his daughter, Luba, um, uh, the little girl right there, Luba, was 11 years old. 
Uh, she came to the evangelistic meetings I did uh, 26 years ago. She came night after night. Now that was something because this little 11-year-old girl came all by herself. Her family didn't come. Her father was an atheist. Her mother was too. Uh, her brother... Uh, uh, Sasha, you know, he was, he was young, he didn't come, but she came by herself, took public transportation, came every single night to the meetings. And at the end of the meetings, she requested baptism. And some of you may recall the story that um, the church leaders there uh, told me that they weren't going to baptize her because she was too young. And I asked them why. They said, well, she's coming by herself, her family, she doesn't have family support, she's going to fall away. And I told the leaders of the church, I says, I'm going to baptize that girl. I says, how do you know that she isn't God's tool to bring her whole family to Jesus? I baptized Luba, vividly remember the event, baptized her in May of 1993, and I told her, Luba, now go win your family for Jesus. And uh, when I went back two years later in 1995, Mama uh, Galia had joined the church, uh, but it took quite some time. It wasn't until the two, year 2000. Um, when I went back in 1995, I told, uh, I told Slava, the daddy, I says, next time I come, uh, I want to know that you have become a part of the Advents family. Um, they got Slava to come to my meetings, the revival series I held, because he had a video camera, and they encouraged him to videotape. And, and that's why he came every night, so he heard my messages. But I made appeals to him. He even came to the airport to see us off. I said, Slava, next time you're going to be a part of this fa Adventist family. And he says, no, I'm not. He says, never, never. When I went back in 2008, um, uh, much to my surprise and joy, um, The whole family was part of the Adventist family. Slava had become a part of the church, and uh, now Slava uh, is a, a lay pastor there in Saratov. He gives oversight to uh, Saratov Church Number 5. This picture was taken in 2008. Uh, yes, that is a much younger Pastor Phil, but as you can see, a much fatter Pastor Phil. <clears throat> and uh, so when I went back this time, I had opportunity to connect with the uh, Titian family. I mean, that's one family that I love to connect with every time, and I went over to their home. Uh, they had, uh, we had dinner together at their home, and uh, uh, daughter, um, uh, daughter Luba right here that I baptized, uh, she is now 37 years old. She's a, a f practicing physician and endocrinologist, and uh, uh, just love to connect with her every time I have an opportunity. And these are, these are uh, Luba's two uh, children here uh, in this photo. Uh, and when I went this time, uh, Adventist Health Simi Valley gave me some swag to give away. And with great pleasure, I gave her this uh, little picnic blanket that was sent to me uh, with the mark for, uh, sent with me by the marketing department here at our hospital. And I presented, couldn't think of a better person to present it to than a practicing physician there uh, that, uh, that I baptized. So there I am giving it to uh, uh, Luba Tishina. But, um, and that Sabbath in church, uh, uh, which was just, uh, what, uh, three weeks ago today when I was there, uh, she had to get another hug from me uh, before she said goodbye to me. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to see what God has done in the family. But there's another aspect of, the, of this story that you have not heard. Uh, because what happened to Brother Sasha? I had not seen Brother Sasha since 1995. He eventually went on to Moscow to, um, uh, to work, uh, became an active part of the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And while I was in Moscow this time, I had the opportunity to connect with Sasha for the first time since 1995. And there is Sasha with his beautiful wife, Olga, and his two daughters. Uh, by the way... Um, his, his wife, Olga, uh, has family that lives up in the Seattle area. Her uh, brother is a pastor up there, and Olga actually has a green card, and so she comes to the U.S., um, you know, about three months of, uh, of the year. Uh, she's here now. She just arrived this week, and uh, she uh, has informed us uh, that she's going to be coming down to see her American papa and mama 
uh, sometime within the next six weeks before she goes back. So hopefully you'll have an opportunity to meet uh, Olga personally. But one of the cool things about here is, is Sasha. I mean, he's a big guy. You can see he's uh, well over six feet tall and just a strapping guy. Uh, but he loves his family, and most of all, he loves Jesus. And just uh, in the last couple of weeks, I think it was two weeks ago today, something very special happened because Sasha was ordained as an elder in his local church. Um, and I can't tell you. Excuse me, I can't tell you how that moves my heart. What if we hadn't baptized his, his big sister? Look what God has done and the influence that, um, that that mission trip 26 years ago had and the role it's still playing. And again, as I said, um, hopefully sometime within the next six weeks, you'll have a, uh, the privilege. Sasha won't be here, but you'll have the privilege of uh, meeting Olga. She's planning to come and spend a week uh, with us with those two precious uh, children of hers, and we're looking forward to it. But... You know, God has a beautiful plan, and it's so amazing to see how he works that out. And so as I wrapped up my time in Moscow, uh, those African uh, men there, they had a group I think I shared with you last time. Uh, they loved to sing. They called themselves the Amazing Brothers. And here's the Amazing Brothers here, and hopefully uh, if we can start that video, you can hear them sing. Can we, can we start that, guys? We can have some volume on that. One day as I was walking, walking down, down the road, road, a spirit spoke unto me, and you might want to Uh, those brothers and sisters over there, those young people kind of worked their way into my heart. And uh, two weeks ago, we tried to share with you a video that they sent after I got back. And uh, we're going to be able to show that to you now, uh, this next video. Um, 
And this is their greetings to the SEMA right. church. Hello, happy Sabbath, friends. Uh, we have just uh, finished having our review uh, in this meeting of the program that we recently had with Pastor Phil. And uh, we just want to extend our gratitude to you uh, that you allowed your pastor to come and join us and take uh, part in this uh, opening event of our ministry here in Moscow, Russia. And we are so grateful. We just pray that the Lord continue blessing your church. And he's been a wonderful person and he's so close to our hearts now that uh, we just uh, can't express our feelings uh, more than this in this way. So we just say that God bless you and have a happy Sabbath. Happy, happy Sabbath, Sabbath Simi Valley. Yes, those guys uh, really worked their way into my heart, and uh, I continue to hear from many of them, and uh, God is blessing them, and it was just a real, a real pleasure. So thank you also from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to go and encourage them uh, in Jesus. And that kind of thing encourages my journey as well. When I finished there on uh, the 31st of March, I went on to uh, the city of Saratov, um, where uh, I have done my ministry uh, most of the time, and uh, arrived there on uh, Monday morning, April 1. And while I was there, I had the opportunity. I was kept very busy. I think I shared with you folks the fact. Uh, I, I went back and I did the math. In 17 days between what I did in uh, Moscow and what I did in Saratov, uh, between uh, preaching appointments and public speaking presentations that they had for me, in 17 days, I had 24 major presentations. Um, I came back to Simi Valley to rest. But while I was there, um, I, I, sh I showed you this picture last time, but I want to show it to you again. Um, Uh-oh, there, there it is right there. Um, a photo that was taken in February of, of uh, 2018 when I was there just a little over a year ago. And uh, many of you recognize uh, my two dochkas, uh, uh, Anya Gavello and uh, Katya Cherkosova. And uh, this is, was taken at uh, the um, home, out the country home uh, of, her, uh, of her parents uh, in the uh, city, in the little village. It's not a city, it's a little uh, country village of Zamodia, and it's right on the Volga River, and they have cows and uh, sheep and um, chickens and all kinds of stuff. But I took this picture, and this was when uh, I mentioned to you that um, I didn't have a coat. They wanted me to go, go walking with them out in the cold winter weather of February. And so... Uh, they managed to find this coat that, that grandma, that uh, Koch's grandma had uh, somewhere. I don't know whose coat it had been, but Koch's mother, Olga, uh, put it on me, and since I was too fat to get it to button, she laced it up with these ribbons right there and, uh, so that I could go out hiking with them. When I returned this time, the two girls, when I went back to Zamodia, both Katya and Anya said, Papa, we have got to get another picture. We are so blown away. I think, as I told you last time, uh, the big topic of discussion is what happened to the other half of their Papa. Um, and so they wanted to get a, another picture. So here we are, this picture. And I know it's kind of dark, but you can see this coat wraps all the way around me. And there, they were laughing so hard because there's the ribbon their mother had used the year before uh, to hold that coat on me that now got all the way around me. But they were pretty proud of their papa that he was half the man he had been before. So, um, okay, here we go. Speaking of which, um, when um, on Sabbath morning, I did a presentation, um, I did a, a presentation in Saratov Church Number 5, and Anya translated for me there. And they wanted, they were asking me all kinds of questions. They wanted to know what happened to me, if I'd gotten sick, how much, why I'd lost all this weight. And I told them, yeah, I got really sick. And they said, oh, what kind of sickness? And I said, I got sick of being fat. <laughs> anyway, I, as they were listening, as they, as they finished, uh, people started coming up, lining up. And, and I asked Anya, I said, what do all these people want to do? She said, Papa, they want to take pictures with you. And you see this la what lady here, she's a uh, pretty good size herself right there. Uh, by the way, you can see this picture in the background of me. Uh, that I had flashed up there, a, a photo of me from May of 2017. You can see how big I am there. 
Anyway, this woman wanted to come take a picture, and several other people too, and I asked uh, uh, Anya, I said, what's this about? And she says, well, they want to make sure you have a picture because next time this lady tells me and, and all the others that when you come back next time, they're going to be half the size they are now too. So I'm saying hallelujah. I'm saying hallelujah to that. This is a picture I took with uh, the pastors there in Saratov and church administrators, conference leaders. Always love meeting with them. And uh, I had the opportunity of sharing with uh, the two pastors of Saratov Church Number 1, uh, this is uh, Pastor Nikolai. He's the pastor of Saratov Church Number One. This is Pastor Sasha. He's the pastor of, Sasha, of, of Saratov Church Number Two. Saratov Church Number One was the original group of Adventist believers, about 35 to 40 people, when I went in there 26 years ago, and that church still functions. They share the same facility. Uh, one group meets in the morning, the other group meets in the afternoon, and they rotate that arrangement throughout the year. But uh, Pastor Sasha, he's a young unordained pastor, and he's pastor of Saratov Church Number 2. Many of you uh, shared your financial resources so I could have a gift to take in with uh, them uh, last year. And last May and June, uh, we presented them a, a large amount of money. Uh, but you know what? Money continued. People here continued to give money, and we had money in the fund. And, and by the time 2018 closed out, and Lee, our treasurer, said, Pastor, what do I do with this? There was still $2,500. And I said, well, we transfer it on. So in February, early February, I transferred it on to the conference, wired it through the Pacific Union. And when I had arrived, just a few days before I got there, uh, it took that long. But just a few days before I arrived there in uh, April, uh, the money had arrived. And the conference officials gave me the money. And I had the privilege of giving it to them in rubles. Uh, I think it was like 106,000 rubles uh, that I presented that they are using. Uh, they have already done great beautifications with their church, and I'm so happy for what they've done. I told them when they're done, I said, we could use some help in Simi Valley to renovate our church. So, uh, One of the things that I had the privilege of doing, and this was one of the presentations, that uh, Tanya, uh, Tanya Prijaznyuk, who is one of my dochkas there, uh, she uh, is one that earned a PhD in English linguistics and she uh, now owns and operates her own English language school. And she asked me, she said, Papa, can you please come and teach my students? So one afternoon I spent uh, three hours, an hour each with different uh, age groups and this was one photo that I took uh, with one of the, uh, some of her students. I asked her, I said, what do you want me to teach them? She says, you know, they're learning how to speak English, but she says, they don't understand idiomatic expressions, you know, things that we take for granted. And so um, there I was. I had a whole list of English idiomatic expressions that you and I use every day uh, that they're clueless about. In fact, even Tanya, when I use that, I don't dumb down my English. She says, please, Papa, do not dumb down your English to me. She says, that's the only way I learn. So, you know, expressions like cut me some slack, cold turkey, uh, you know, climbing the wall, different things like that. And so I spent some time, an hour, with each one of these groups, and they just had a blast learning these English idiomatic expressions. They, they were having a real struggle. What on earth does cold turkey mean? And then uh, the next day I spent uh, with Anya, uh, Dochka Anya, uh, teaches at uh, the Bosch Corporation. Now, many of you are familiar with Bosch. They make um, all kinds of appliances, and they make spark plugs and all that. It's a German company. They have a large plant there in Engels, Russia, and they have employed Anya uh, to teach English to their employees. They feel it's important for them to know. And so she, again, had three classes. I spent three hours with her uh, while I was there, and uh, I had a fun time. These were adults, and so I had a fun time doing the same thing with them, uh, teaching them uh, the English idiomatic expressions. And she has a beautiful, beautiful classroom there uh, that she instructs them in. It had a wonderful a wonderful time. And many of you uh, remember seeing pictures of her younger sister, um, Alona, who um, I unfortunately didn't have much time with Alona. Uh, she is such a busy girl. She's in a master's program. And since I didn't stay with the Gavello family this time, the only time I saw uh, uh, Alona was uh, three weeks ago today at church when I preached at the Ingalls Church. She was there. I had 10 minutes with her before they rushed me off to the next church, but you might wonder what she's doing there. The girl absolutely loves 
jalapenos. And so what do you think her American papa brought her? Joel, what did I do? I brought her a little thing, a little jar of pickled jalapenos. The girl was so excited. This was taken there in the, in the foyer of the Angles Church. And she says, oh, Papa, I just can't wait. And so you see she's already eating her jalapenos, her pickled jalapenos. But I want you to know I've taken good care of them. Um, uh, hopefully no one uh, is, is hearing this uh, uh, very uh, contraband thing that I'm going to say. But let me tell you, uh, they now, now have seeds there to raise jalapenos uh, in their own gardens. Let me just put it that way. I won't tell you where it came from, and you don't tell uh, immigration where it came from either. So, uh, But here's their mama, uh, Sviata, who was my translator uh, 26 years ago, and uh, we took a special photo. I, I stopped by their home um, on Sunday, the 7th of April. I happened to be in the neighborhood, uh, and I stopped by their home and snapped this picture uh, with Sviata. Uh, because it was 26 years to the day, it was April 7 of 1993, that I met Sviata for the first time when she became my translator. She met me at the train station there, our, our group, she met us at the train station there in Saratov, and that began uh, a 26 long uh, journey. And by the way, um, it was really special. She reached out to me this week. She uh, had heard of my father's passing, and um, she uh, gave me a call and we shed some tears together because it was just two years ago that she lost her mama. So anyway, this was a special uh, moment that I had uh, with her and her husband, her husband, Volodia. Now, Joel, I don't know if you can see, but I, I, I had a mission here. I have gone, I've traveled over there, I've traveled in Europe, traveled in Russia, and nothing makes me more ticked off than when I see people walking around with New York Yankees hats. And so I tried to dilute it a little bit, Joel. I took a half a dozen Dodgers caps, and I don't know whether you can see, but he's wearing a Dodgers, he's wearing a Dodgers cap right there. And uh, uh, he was pretty proud of that. And so were the other people that I gave Dodgers caps to. So hopefully there's, uh, there's gonna be a few less Yankees caps around there. But this picture, I wanna share this. I've, sh I've told you about this before. This lady, this dear sister, came to my meetings 26 years ago, and she received a Bible. I gave Bibles to everyone who attended uh, the majority of the meetings. She had me sign her Bible uh, 26 years ago when I gave it to her. And she's had me sign her Bible every single time that I've gone back, including last year. I wondered whether I'd see this sister again. Well, when I was there in church, in the Saratov Church three weeks ago today, her daughter came up to me. You, you saw her daughter in this picture right here. Her daughter came up to me, and she said, Pastor Phil, she said, um, unfortunately, my mother is ill today, and she can't be here. She said, but she wanted me to bring you her Bible. Will you please sign it for her again? So here I am. I'm signing her mama's Bible. Um, and again, a precious reminder to me how important God's word is. Um, and that we value it as something, a, a, a valuable piece that God has given us. And that woman is always a reminder to me how she has cherished the word of God that we gave her all those years ago. Uh, here's a photo of uh, just some of the people. This is just a portion of the people of the Saratov Church uh, that wanted to send their love and greetings uh, back to you here in uh, Simi Valley. I had a precious time with them three weeks ago today uh, when I gave them the, uh, their Sabbath morning a message. And then here uh, was uh, uh, the group of people that um, came to say goodbye to me uh, at the airport uh, when I departed. And um, quite a group, they, they wanted to be there. And again, Joel, if you can see right here, there's another Dodgers cap. This one is Dodger blue, but uh, yeah, we, we like to say we tried it to. Uh, to make sure that we uh, distributed it well there. So it was uh, special to have them there. And this time, um, uh, I stayed with the Prizia's new family. Uh, Tanya is here translating for me. And what a precious uh, reminder it is for me because um, Tanya reminded me, she was 14 years old when she came to my evangelistic meetings in 1993. And, and she reminded me the story of why she came. Tanya was learning English and her mother had received a flyer 
that there was an English-speaking evangelist that was going to be there and holding these meetings, and she says, Tanya, we must go. And she says, Mom, I don't want to go. And she says, listen, girl, you're going because this will be a great opportunity for you to hear the English language spoken. It will help your English skills. She said, please, you are going with me. Tanya went with her mama every night. She got some English lessons, but more importantly, she got Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, she has been a faithful church member, a faithful believer ever since. And uh, she is truly a precious daughter to me. Uh, I, I love her uh, dearly. And so it was great to have this opportunity. Here she wanted to get a picture with me uh, uh, Friday night after she translated my meeting Friday night. It was really quite cold there. And I uh, took this picture and... Uh, uh, her husband said, you guys look like Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, but we had a great time. Uh, the, the morning before, uh, this was the morning of April 4, it was, uh, um, it was Tanya's 40th birthday. And I had actually, she did not know this, but when I received the invitation and they gave me some flexibility to go to Moscow, uh, I purposely timed my visit so that I could spend uh, a time with her on her 40th birthday. And there we are. Uh, the, the morning of her 40th birthday, early that morning, it snowed four inches there in Saratov. And uh, so here we are. Uh, we're getting out, ready to go out for the day. And uh, we pose for this selfie there uh, next to her uh, yard uh, where you can see a fresh snow. And that was just uh, uh, three weeks ago uh, that that, was, uh, that happened. And that evening, we had a little birthday celebration for her. And um, it was just a really special time. Uh, her brother... Um, uh, Alexei in the picture, uh, you don't see, I, I don't have a picture here of her sister-in-law, but this is her brother Alexei. You've heard me tell the story about how Alexei, how Alexei was in prison and God miraculously released him, and he heard the good news about Jesus, and he's now the head elder of Saratov Church Number 2. Uh, God has done truly, truly, truly amazing things in the family. Oh, here, here's the picture of the family. Here's Anya, uh, Alexei's wife. Uh, Anya uh, was a member of the Saratov Church when we went there 26 years ago. She was just a young girl of 20 years of age. And uh, uh, I remember her uh, telling me, you know, I need a husband. Can't you find me a husband? Well, I didn't find her one in America, but uh, when we brought the Volkov family into the church, uh, she eventually married Alexei, and they are just a wonderful uh, family. And you see this other couple here in the picture, uh, Yura and Luba. And uh, here I am posed with them. And a very interesting story uh, about Yura and Luba. And I may have mentioned this to you before, but you got to hear the rest of the story to this one, folks. Um, Yura uh, became a Seventh-day Adventist about four years ago. And uh, he, um, he came to uh, his wife, uh, Luba, and he says, why don't you come with me to church? And she wouldn't hear anything of it. She didn't want to go to church. No, I'm not interested in your stuff. She was a very staunch Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, and she says, no, I'm not going. Well, he begged and pleaded with her to go. And finally, when we were there a year ago, May, the Sabbath, May 26, um, and we were having the big uh, 25th anniversary celebration, and I was preaching for that, uh, Luba said, okay, I will go with you to this special ceremony, but don't ever ask me to come again. She went she saw the beauty of the fellowship with those believers there. She heard the hope-filled message that I shared. She told her husband, I'm coming back. Um, pastor Sasha, the young pastor you saw previously, started Bible studies with her, and she was baptized in July of last year. And uh, we say hallelujah uh, for that. And so here she was posed in this picture, and she was thanking me. She says, thank you so much for coming back. She says, uh, if you hadn't come back, she says, I don't know, I may not have, have decided to hear the gospel. And she says, you presented to me the gospel of Jesus, and I'm so happy. She says, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Well, anyway, um, as we're visiting there that evening, Thursday evening, the 4th of, of April, she says, uh, I've got to share a story with you. Uh, she says, my grandmother, my grandmother is, has some dementia issues, and she's in a skilled nursing facility, and she said, um, my, my grandma wanted to be anointed. And so my mother, who's a very staunch Russian Orthodox, uh, called in the Orthodox priest to, to anoint her, and, 
And, and she said, that didn't go well. And I said, what happened there? And she says, well, it was really a, a very formal service, and there was no spirituality to it all, and, and Grandma didn't like it, and even though she's very orthodox, she didn't like it, and, and my mom was turned off with it. But she says, you know, my mom has been very against uh, my attending of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But she says, surprise, my mother asked if our Adventist church, our Adventist pastor, would anoint grandma. And she says, well, let me ask. So she went to the pastor, young Pastor Sasha, and she said, Pastor Sasha, would you come and anoint my grandmother? And um, he said, well, he says, I'm going to have to check with conference officials on that. And sadly, many of those conference officials that I showed you pictured, uh, that I was pictured with earlier, I uh, told him, Sasha, it's forbidden. And uh, uh, she said, I asked Luba, I said, why did he tell you that? And she says, well, uh, they told us that Adventists don't anoint non-Adventists. And I said, seriously? And she said, yeah. And she says, well, Pastor Phil, do you do that? And I said, certainly. I've done it many times. And she says, well, they said that it was forbidden. She said, would you come and anoint my grandmother? And I says, well, honey, this is really complex. I said, you know, I'm a visitor here. And I said, I've got to be very careful what I do when, I, when I'm here. But I said, I will investigate, and in, unless there's compelling reason for me not to, I promise you that I will anoint your grandmother before I leave town. Well, I wasn't in Saratov that long. I was there only one week, and this was on Thursday night. So Friday morning, I set up a meeting with Pastor Sasha, and I asked him, I said, Pastor, I said, tell me the story. What, what happened here? And he says, well, he says, uh, conference administration told me it was forbidden that Seventh-day Adventist pastors don't anoint non-Seventh-day Adventists. And I said, well, that's very interesting. I said, because this Seventh-day Adventist pastor does. And so anyway, he says, well, he said, Pastor Phil, he says, I want you to know that I would do it. But he says, I'm not ordained. And he says, I can't, I can't put myself at risk. And I said, I understand. I understand. I said, you let me handle it from here. Friday night when I had the Vespers, uh, there were some conference officials there. Pastor Vasily, who is the conference treasurer. I know Vasily well. Um, he's like a son to me. He... Uh, is going to be celebrating his 40th birthday this year, and I've known him for a number of years. Uh, we have great respect for each other, and I, I talked to, to Pastor Vasily uh, on Friday night, and I said, can you explain this to me? And he says, yes. He says, I've heard that you anoint non-Adventists. And I said, yes, I do. And he says, well, we don't here. And I says, why is that? And he says, well, he tried to give me all the excuses. He tried to point scripture, so I went to scripture, and I said, let's take a look at scripture. And uh, James chapter 5, he says, call for your elders. And I says, Vasily, it doesn't say that. And I says, if you want to go back to the Greek, I'll take you there. And uh, I convinced him of that. And he said, okay. Uh, well, he says, Ellen White forbids it. And I said, where? And so he tried to come up with some stuff. And when I shattered all of that, um, and, and, and he didn't have anything else to say, um, he got real quiet with me. And um, I said, what's the issue, Vasily? And he says, well, he says, I want you to know, Pastor Phil, he says, my heart's with you. He says, my heart is with you. And I says, so then what's the issue? He says, it's the brethren up the food chain. He says, uh, they, they have forbid us to do this. And I looked at him and I said, Vasily, I'm going to tell you something. I says, there needs to be a reality check here. And by the way, let me hit the pause button here for a minute. Before I did anything... I called Pastor Jan and I got her counsel, and here's what she, she told me. She gave me some very wise counsel. She said, honey, she says, you've been going there for 26 years. You have, you have given them countless, uh, you have raised countless funds for that church. You have been there to support them through thick and thin. She says, you have made big investment there. She says, you have big chips in the bank. She says, it's, start, it's time that you start making some withdrawals. She says, you have some conversations with them, serious conversations. And so with that, that's when I had these converse, conversation with Pastor Vasily. And he's telling me, he says, he said, you know, he says, it's the brethren, and, you know, up the ladder at the, at the union and the division. They forbid us from doing this. And I, um, I said to him, I said, Vasily, I said, it's really sad. I says, because here you are trying to bring all of these people, the, the, the biggest demographic of, of, of people here in Russia 
is the Russian Orthodox Church. And I says, you are trying to evangelize those people and bring them out of the Russian Orthodox traditions. And I says, you need to get rid of some of those traditions yourself. I says, because what you're dealing with is straight out of Russian Orthodoxy. And um, uh, Luba verified that for me. She said that she went later to uh, a Russian Orthodox priest that she knows well, and she says, what if a Seventh-day Adventist, she says, my husband's a Seventh-day Adventist, what if he came and asked for anointing? And he says, we would not anoint him until he uh, 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 um, uh, recanted of his beliefs in Adventism and allowed us to, uh, to re-baptize him, they sprinkle him, and, and then we'd anoint him. And uh, so their tradition, the Adventist traditions, are straight out of orthodoxy. And when I challenged Vasily with that, and I told Vasily, I said, uh, Pastor Vasily, I said, there are so many reasons why this needs to happen. And he just kind of melted. And he says, Pastor Phil, my heart is with you. And I says, then go with me. Let's anoint this grandmother, shall we? And he says, let's do it. And so um, I told Luba. I said, Luba, I told her Friday night. I says, you tell your mama we're going to go and anoint her, uh, your grandmother. But I says, here's what your mama needs to do. I was very careful in what I did. Uh, her mother is very anti-Adventist. I says, you tell your mama if she wants uh, this American Adventist pastor to anoint her mother, she needs to be in the Seventh-day Adventist church tomorrow. Now, I had a, a reason why I wanted her there. I wanted her to hear the hope-filled message that I was going to preach, but I also wanted her to see that Adventists weren't strange like her daughter thought they were. And I also wanted an opportunity to visit with her about the process of anointing. Her mama came. I had a beautiful conversation with her, um, and she was so touched and she was so moved. She, um, she told me, she said, um, her mama said, I, I really, really want to, uh, I really want to do this. I, I really uh, want to you, see you move ahead, and I'm so glad I came to church today. But I was in a real dilemma, you know, over this thing. What was I supposed to do? What should I do? Uh, do I ignore the family request? Do I upset the cultural norms? Uh, and so what would you do? That's when I had these conversations, and uh, we went to the Bible, and uh, when, I, when I cut down all of their misunderstandings, uh, Pastor Vasily was ready. I shared with him some other concepts. What about, you know, uh, what about Jesus healing the Syrophoenician woman in Matthew, the book of Matthew? You know, you remember the woman that said, uh, Jesus said, you know, we, we don't uh, uh, feed our stuff to the dogs. And she says, but even the, even the little puppies get the crumbs from under the master, master's table. And the only reason why Jesus did that is he was testing his disciples and his believers. Jesus ministered to the Syrophoenician woman. What about the ten lepers that Jesus healed? The only one that came back and said thank you was a Gentile. Uh, what about the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman? God brought the God, Jesus brought the gospel to the entire city of Samaria because Jesus was willing to minister to non-believers. What about the whole ministry of the Apostle Paul that came to minister to the Gentiles? And you and I wouldn't be here if the gospel hadn't gone to the Gentiles. And so when I shared that with Pastor Vasily, um, everything just melted and he was ready to go with me. And again, here is this picture of Edina, uh, Luba's mother. She came to church on Sabbath. She was so overjoyed. She says, Pastor Phil, you filled my heart today with this message of hope and courage. And she says, when I finished talking to her about anointing, she says, not only do I not want you to anoint my mother, but I want you to anoint me too. And uh, so we had a beautiful experience. She fully understood the process. And that next day on Sunday, I went uh, with the whole family. Here's Pastor Sasha here. Here's Pastor Vasily here. Here's Luba. Here is uh, Yura, Luba's husband. Here is Luba's mother, Edina. And here's Grandma Lydia. And I will tell you, they were worried because she's got dementia issues. But you know what? We prayed that she would be lucid that day. They said they had never seen her so clear-minded in months. She took out her Russian Bible, and she read right along with me. She fully understood. I asked her, I said, do you understand what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it? She said, absolutely, Pastor, and I want you to anoint me. We had a beautiful anointing service, and the two uh, Russian pastors... Uh, participated in it and afterwards when we were leaving they told me they said pastor phil we have never seen such a beautiful spiritual uh, anointing service thank you for introducing this to us and i will tell you that you know every time i go i i i i always wonder 
you know, what is the reason? What is my purpose for going? And, um, and it became abundantly clear to me uh, this time why God wanted me to be there, to minister to this family. Because you want to know the real miracle here is not a miracle that grandma will get her mind back. Um, you know, she's in her 70s. Uh, the chances of her recovering from dementia um, are probably pretty slim. But this, this anointing service wasn't about physical healing. This anointing service was about spiritual healing. Not just for Lydia, but for her daughter, Edina, for her granddaughter, Luba, for uh, her husband, uh, um, Ura. Uh, they all want an anointing, and we anointed every single one of them. And I want to tell you the totally cool thing that has happened. Luba has been in touch with me since I left. And she said, Papa Phil, she says, you wouldn't believe what's happened. She says, my mother went home, and she cleared out more than 30 Russian Orthodox icons that she had in her house. And she says, I don't need these images here anymore in my house. And she says, she's asking me questions, and she wants to know about my journey with Jesus, and she wants to know about what I believe as a Seventh-day Adventist. I can't wait to tell you folks the rest of the story, because I believe that God has an incredible miracle for this family. We have a story to tell to the nation. We have a story to tell to people here in Simi Valley. We have a story to tell to people um, in our communities, in our neighborhoods. We have a story to tell to the world a story of the good news about Jesus. And my impassioned appeal to you today is let Jesus use you to tell that blessed story of a soon coming Savior. Won't you join me in doing that? Let's do it together. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the beautiful, beautiful story that you have given to us. The story, the amazing story of your amazing grace. Lord, we know that there are lives that are touched every day, and each one of us here are a miracle of your grace and your mercy. Somebody told somebody else, and we were either, we either heard the gospel firsthand, or family members heard it, or whatever, and we are in this church today because of the amazing good news about Jesus. But we're reminded through this story of Luba and her mother Adina and, and her grandmother that there are still people who need to hear the amazing uh, grace of Jesus Lord I pray that you'd bless Lydia I pray that you'd bless Adina we can't wait to hear the rest of this story I pray that you'd bless our brothers and sisters there in Russia I think of the young people that made decisions for baptism while I was there in Moscow I pray that you'd bless that whole outreach ministry but bless ours here Lord and may we be diligent in sharing the good news of Jesus with our friends, with our family, with our neighbors, with our work associates, so that Jesus can come soon. May we uh, each and every day keep our eyes fixed on eternity and spending forever with you. Bless us to this end, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.